Welcome to On Air with Kate Butler, where we are revealing life's best kept secrets. Welcome back to On Air with Kate Butler as we dig into revealing life's best kept secrets. Today, I am here with Melanie Renee, who you may already know of based on her wildly successful YouTube channel, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. If you do not know Melanie Renee yet, or you are not familiar with her, please allow me to introduce you to this beautiful soul. She is a social media influencer whose work is focused on humanizing hoarding disorder. She explains the true mentality behind her hoarding disorder on her YouTube channel, A Hoarder's Heart. And it's really about her journey of how she freed herself from hoarding disorder. I find this absolutely fascinating and I could not wait to have her on here so that we could, first of all, become more familiar with what is this um, how do we help people in our life, right? That may also be experiencing some of the same things. But I'm also fascinated by the mindset behind this because mindset's my jam, of course, right? And anything involving like mindset and why people make the choices they make and do the things that they do. Like I am all about like diving into and digging into because at the end of the day, I really kind of believe that it's all, I don't kind of believe it. I absolutely believe it's all about the power of choice. So Melanie, I am super excited to see your take on all of this. So welcome. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me here. It is such an honor to be speaking with you right now. Yay. <laughs> I'm super excited. I am super, I feel your excitement. I've been looking forward to this all day. Me too. I brought my, my little baby Lola in here with me. She's in my uh, this <gasps> first call. Lola. My little baby Lola is a little cavapoo that we just got. Like she's a super, she's a baby. She's like nine weeks old now. We got her when she was eight oh. weeks old. And this is her first work call. So I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I'm here with Lola. This just makes me a piece of cake. <laughs> so I love it. She's like sleeping in her bed over here and she's oh. a little tiny angel. Oh my gosh, I love it. So anyway, a uh, little side note for everybody there. So you might see her pop up on that on the screen <laughs> if you're watching this or you might hear her if you're listening to this in just a moment. But let's go ahead and dive right in, Melanie, because what I yeah. really want to understand from you uh, right off the bat, just kind of set the tone for our call today, is have you had that game-changing moment that we talk about? Have you really had a game-changing moment in your life? And if so, how would you describe that to us? So I, I've had multiple game-changing moments, right? I feel like God has been laying this message on my heart for years, saying, you're going to clean the hoard not only are you going to clean the hoard, you're going to do it publicly in front of everybody. You're going to explain the mindset behind it. And you're going to help people around the world understand why do people struggle with hoarding disorder? Why must I hold on to this thing? Now, I want to say that the most game-changing moment, right, after feeling all these messages, and I say feel because I, I felt, and I was like, okay, we'll, we'll do it, but not today. Well, the moment that it changed was a very cold day in January, right? We're talking like frigid air, 20 degrees, and there was a knock at the door, right? You hear that knock, and it's every hoarder's worst Fear is an unexpected visit. No. <laughs> I have the truth bumps. I have the truth bumps, everyone. Yes, okay. like, no. Who is knocking at my door? And I ever so sneakily pulled the curtain back to see who is out there. And it was my friend, a neighbor across the street. And she knew my work schedule. She saw my Jeep in the driveway. And I thought, she knows that I'm home. Now, the old me for unexpected guests would have been like, just hide, right? Hide in the back. And when they talk to you, make the excuses. Oh, girl, I was in the shower. You know, oh, I was straight in my hair. Right? You always, I would always make the excuse of why I didn't answer the door. I didn't hear you. I was working out in the basement, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but there was a tug in my heart to say, open this door. And I fearfully was led 
to go answer it. Now, mind you, as I slowly opened the door, I slithered my body through the crack. <laughs> yes. Slid on to the front porch because I did not want her to see everything behind me. I didn't want her to see the messes. I didn't want to, I was too embarrassed, right? So I kind of just slithered out that door <laughs> onto the front step. And of course she was like, oh, hey, how are you? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm good, you know? And she was like, well, we were baking, you know, me and the kids, because our boys are also friends. We were baking and I just missed you. I wanted to catch up with you. And I just dropped off these muffins, right? And I was like, oh my God, that is so incredibly sweet. Thank you. But the guilt that I felt of not inviting her inside in this freezing, frigid, 20 degree weather and having her stay out on the step was so overwhelming that I felt I felt there there needs to be a change and of course I came up with an excuse to be like girl I'd invite you in where it's nice and toasty but we're remodeling the front room and it's a hot mess and here I'm lying to this poor girl so that she can understand why is she not inviting me in here it's freezing <laughs> and you know, we kept it short, you know, we kept it to 10, 15 minutes, because obviously we were getting numb, right? <laughs> so uh, I thanked her and I said, the next time when the space is cleaned up, you can come on in. And when I went inside, I was just, it was just such an impact that one moment, right? Because I was like, no more no more. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to hide this. I want people to understand the mentality of hoarding disorder, not only understand it, but to humanize it, to take the stigma out of that negative, you know, energy around it, right? Ah. So that people don't feel isolated and get help. Because once right. you are understood, once people are like, oh, that's why she has all that stuff. Then they're like, oh, well, I can go get help now because I'm accepted and I'm not shunned from society. Fascinating. So and when did you identify that you had hoarding disorder or where, where can you pinpoint that this began for you? So it, it definitely, uh, the signs were shown as a child, right? I loved my toys. I love making stories up. I imagined, you know, these stories and would write them out and play them out with my things. It started to trigger when I started, um, when we had moved from fifth to sixth grade and I went to a new middle school and we went through that very awkward early 90s stage. You know, we were all kinds of funky. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and as a new girl and being more shy and sensitive at that time, um, I got bullied really badly, like really badly from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And I didn't know how to cope with it because like, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell anyone. I hid it. Yeah. But when I came home from school and I went into my room, I was safe. No kids could bully me in my room. I had all of my you know, stuffed animals. I had all of my, my collectibles. I had all of my drawings, all of my arts and crafts. Everything that expressed who I was brought me comfort. This stuff wasn't going to judge me, and these right? Things in your life that brought you joy made you happy, right? And now you're yes. surrounded by the things that made you joy because yes. outside of that comfort zone, you were experiencing, you know, things that made you feel really awful. That right? hurt. Okay. It hurt my heart, right? So to come home into my room with all my hoarders, I was never neat. Let's just be real there. I always had a bunch of stuff in collections, mm -hmm. but it made me safe because it wouldn't judge me. It was there to make me spot, like smile. It was a self-expression of who I was. See, I'm artistic. See, I love Disney. See, I love, and it made me feel good about myself mm -hmm. and an escape from that harsh reality when I had to get up and go onto that bus and be hurt by other schoolmates. Wow. Okay. So I can start to see, I can start to see how this unfolds, right? So all of a sudden now these, 
this, the comfort you're finding in these things versus mm -hmm. people, let's just say, or relationships. Yes. Yes. Um, and they're bringing you comfort. And then perhaps maybe the more things you have around you now, the more love or the more comfort or the more, more joy you will feel mm -hmm. and experience. Right. And so now how does this develop over time? Or do you see this developing? When did you realize, Oh, this is different than other people. So I was blind to it for years. Honestly, I knew that I knew that it was different because other people's houses weren't like that. It was just my room that was hoarded at the time. My mom's house was very neat and tidy, very clean. I kind of chalked it up that I was just eccentric. That's just me. I'm quirky. You know, I love creations and I love art and I love things. And it's just, I just don't know how to organize my collections. That's how I saw it. I didn't see it as hoarding until much later. And what, what was that like when you saw it as hoarding? What was that? What was that? What was that awareness or that aha moment? So it was kind of right around the same time when my neighbor had knocked on the door. Okay. Um, it was when entryways started getting blocked. Right. That's low. That's you're transitioning from level three hoarding to level four hoarding when you start to block entry ways right we couldn't get out the back door there was the goat trail that you say right when you see the stuff piled up and there's this little path they call it a goat trail and i started seeing things start to be stacked higher than i am and it just kind of was like i i, I don't want to live like this we couldn't have our dinner in the back patio because the laundry room was completely blocked we had to carry our little plates and go out the front door and go around the back to sit on the back patio to enjoy these outside family dinners mm. and it was just like this this isn't right this isn't right for my kids this isn't right for us as a living situation, we should freely be able to go through the back door. I shouldn't have to, you know, jump over things. It shouldn't be an obstacle course to go outside. <laughs> you bring up a great point, Melanie, where you're saying we, which now sparked a whole new kind of uh, dialogue in my own mind where I'm saying, oh, I'm only thinking about how this is affecting you up until now in this conversation. And then when you said we, now I was like, oh, wow, there's other people that are experiencing this along with us. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about, I'm assuming your husband, right? Or your children or what, like, talk, what is the family situation like and how did, how did it affect besides obviously not being able to walk out the back door, how, how did this affect people that you were living with? So for my children, it was, it was heartbreaking because it was what they knew. Okay. Fair enough. And, but I didn't want them to be raised that this was okay. It was okay to have an over a mass form of clutter, right? It's not okay to go through the pathway. So you don't trip. Um, my husband, God bless him. <laughs> my husband is so laid back and that he loved me so much that it, I knew it got on his nerves and he didn't know how to approach me about it, but he would just kind of grin and bear it to keep his wife happy. Okay. Right. Because hoarding was my coping mechanism and I'm this happy free spirit because that's how I coped with life. So happy wife, happy life. Well, I guess we're going to have some stuff in the back room, but you know, he was just very, he would say something that it would agitate him, you know, like, this is ridiculous. We really got to clean this out. But at the same time, didn't want to hurt my feelings. He was treading lightly because I got so defensive when he brought it up mm. because I didn't, I didn't know what I, you know, I, I didn't know how to let it go. And I didn't know how to put words to those expressions. So I just got mad. So I think that we have addressed it in here with you, but talk to me a little bit about your experience because now you being really the voice of humanizing hoarder, hoarding disorder, um, you have now also been privy to other people who are experiencing this as well. So can you share with me based on what you've learned or the conversations that you've had, why do people have, why do people hoard? So people hoard, for many, many reasons. Now, it is a mental health disorder, right? 
everybody sees this stuff, right? There's so much stuff. But what I want you guys to really look at is the mental mindset behind it, because it's stemmed from anxiety, depression, PTSD, ADHD, OCD, lots of D's here, right? Because it's a <laughs> disorder. <laughs> because <laughs> it's a disorder right it's a mental disorder so this the hoarding this stuff has been my coping mechanism I struggle with the anxiety and the ADHD I am not on medication for either why because the hoard was my medication the hoard was how I coped with these feelings it made me feel secure it had a story it was literally an, an extension of my soul because it represented who I was so if I had my sword squirrel away life was great <laughs> Because you felt that sense of security with you. It was security. It was my security blanket, my foundation. I, everything was cool until it got out of hand. Okay. <laughs> it got out of hand, right? And, um, and now you are at a point where you say, enough is enough. I want to be able to invite a neighbor in. I want to be able to have a friend over. I want my family to be able to walk out of the back door. But yet you have this disease, this disorder, this mental, you know, block, if you will, right? And you've been living with this now. You, what I'm really hearing from you, your entire life that you remember, yes. even as a child, it, it, it was growing, but you can even yes. remember from a very early age, loving your things and stuff around you and they made you feel comforted and loved. So how do you then, even with this awareness, how do you begin to take steps in another direction? Can you walk us through that process? Sure. When you, when you desire to change, when your heart has had enough Change happens when the pain to remain the same exceeds the fear of the change. Amen. It hurts too much to remain like this. We need to pivot. We need to change. It's not as scary now to look for these steps because I don't want to stay where I am. Mm. So now it's time to find the solutions. Mm. Now it's time to see it in a new light. Wow. And with hoarding, like everything else, really, it starts in your mind. Right. It is a mindset. It is a shift. It is looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that no matter what that change is, the strength is within you to change. The desires are there. The support is there. Just look for it. That's all. What's one step that someone could take when they have this awareness that you're speaking of mm -hmm. and they say, okay, I am ready for the solution. Or, you know, if you're anything like me, right, if, you know, I can go one or two ways. Sometimes I get an inspiration, I get hit with that divine download and I hit the ground running. I see the whole path from beginning to end if I get a download like that and I literally hit the ground running and I do not stop until it's accomplished, right? That's, that's scenario one. But scenario two is like, I know something and this would be what this would look like, right? For if I was in this situation. Now I don't have hoarding disorder, but I, but I, I'm not super organized. So when you said like other people's houses don't look this way, like I can totally identify with that because whenever I walk into anyone's house, I'm like, how is it so neat and you're so organized? Like, I know. I don't have a part of my brain that works that way, right? Like somebody's coming over. I'm like, oh my gosh, put the stuff in the drawers and close, close the cabinet. <laughs> yes. Like how, how do you do this? <laughs> like, do you have 20 people who help you clean? I don't, understand like right so I can relate on some level so but if I am but I know something about myself needs to change and I've been kind of tiptoeing around it we all have these things in our life right I am a processor in in scenario b or scenario number two over here right I need to know okay I want to see it I want to process what the steps might look like and then I want to like feel my way into them right and then I kind of want to just you know, I almost have to like sit with it and then 
Yes. I decide that I commit and make that decision. So if I'm a processor around this, what might some of my steps look like as I begin to shift in the other direction? Okay. I'm definitely with you with the B team. Okay. We are B team. <laughs> so for me, what it started to look like is that it definitely was baby step. And I talk about baby step decluttering. I had to change the mindset because that's the source. Okay. It's, it's not, it is this stuff, but once you start healing your mind, then you can start healing and letting go of this stuff. So that's our first starting point is getting into your own head. And just, there's a lot of negative self-talk with the hoarding disorder, right? I can't do this. There's too much stuff. It's overwhelming. Where do I start? I'm not strong enough. So you have to start to change that dialogue into, I, I am strong enough. I do want to change. I can let go of this one item. And I started visualizing myself doing it. I started visualizing myself, I'm going to declutter five things today and I'm going to feel really good about it. I also wrote about it too. I wrote and just imagined this story in my head of me going through this stuff, cleaning it out, enjoying it, okay? Not freaking out, enjoying the process and feeling so freaking amazed on how well I cleared out that space. So it was mind work, if you will, before I physically started decluttering. I ran the story in my mind because my hoarding is triggered by anxiety. So as long as I played the video in my head that I did it over and over again, it wasn't as scary because I almost believed it already happened. I don't have to be afraid. So you are offering gold here, pure, pure gold. It matches our theme today. We did not plan this, that we're both <laughs> these gold colors, right? But we oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is absolute gold for um for all of us right as, as a beautiful reminder for some of us and also maybe uh some eye-opening new information for others but you know these i am statements that you are sharing the i am statement is the most powerful statement that our brain can oh hear. i love that Wayne right? Dyer, right Wayne Dyer. i am is a command from yes. our brain out to the universe and the universe doesn't question what we ask for it only matches it so oh. you're saying right this i am statement mm -hmm. it just computes as is and it just does whatever it can in your physical world and environment to match what it is that you're saying and yes. what you also said was to say i can do this one of my favorite things to to kind of talk about to shift mindset is making a list of all the things that you can't do and changing that can't to won't so that's, that's heavy, right? It's yeah. Like when you're like, okay, I can't get rid of this. It's like, oh no, you can, you can, won't. you won't get rid of that's it. Right. But what if you, what if you did that? Cause sometimes that step is necessary, right? It's for somebody yeah. to get to the, I can. So if you're thinking, I can't do this, like I can't throw this away or I can't release something or I can't have that difficult conversation. Like it doesn't even have to be about, yep. stuff, right? I can't lose the weight. And it's like, no, nope, there's tools out there to help you with all of these things. So you can, but you're yes. choosing not to. So now just to be honest with yourself and baseline it, let's be real about it and say, I won't, I won't have the difficult conversation. I won't release this, this thing. I won't throw this away. I won't come to terms with the fact that I have hoarding disorder and I, I won't admit it, right? Like I won't, because then when you say I won't, you're like, oh, whoa, wow, I am making that choice. Like I'm not a victim anymore. Now yes. I am empowered because I am making the choice that I won't do this. But now the power is in your hands and that's the beauty of it. Don't you agree? Like the beauty, yes. I have the power. I have all the control here. So if I want to, I yes. can make the choice to turn yes. it away. And I think that's a really neat way to bring the power back to you when you do feel mm -hmm. so out of control and overwhelmed, which we all have those feelings in our life, of course. Yes. Right? Um, and so that way you're like, okay, let me kind of baseline this, bring it back to my control and identify that I won't do it. And then just decide what don't I want to do and just be honest right. with it. 
but what one thing do I want to do? And for that, I'm going to start. I am capable. I can do this. I am willing to throw one thing away. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. I love this. I love what you are saying. Your goal. What you're also talking about here and writing it out is like speaking it into existence, right? So yeah. this whole idea of, you know, on the B team, right? Where we're talking about, hey, we need to process this a little bit before we jump in with both feet. And yes. I relate to that, obviously. So as I'm processing, you just gave such a beautiful way for people to process. Let's write it down as if it's already happened. Yes. Then when we write it down, we get to play that 30 second movie in our mind over and over again until we feel as if it's real and then once it already it's happened real, it's not scary anymore you said right no, it's not scary okay. so how tell me the the feeling or tell me tell me about your youtube channel because that's really what i'm getting at here where it's really the release because i want to come full circle with like okay that all sounds great <laughs> but yes. what happens when you actually throw the stuff away right so <laughs> full circle to the I don't know what I want to call this. Do you feel like this is an achievement? Do you feel like it's a success? Is it a step? Like maybe all talk to me about the YouTube channel and what are you doing there? And what's the purpose of it? Okay. So the YouTube channel is a hoarder's heart and the name came to me instantly. There was no guessing, right? Cause it was just a hoarder sharing her heart with the world. Mm. And when I started, it was uh, 2018 and I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just like, here's my stuff. <laughs> here's, I'm a little scared, I'm a little ashamed and, but I, I wanna fix it, right? I wanna fix it and I want people to really understand this. Why are they holding on to it? Because once everyone starts to understand it, we're gonna get help, we're gonna seek help. There are millions of people with hoarding disorder, but we don't say anything. So I knew if I spoke up, if I stood up, raised my hand and said, guess what? Here's what's happening. People were gonna stand up and be like, me too, me too. I feel that way as well. And then you start the support group, you start the loving community, and then together you find ways to heal together. And all I did was explain the attachment to the stuff. I'm holding on to the baby blanket. I'm having a hard time letting go because my boys are growing up. I've had three miscarriages and this is how I'm dealing with that pain. And I need to hold on to it just a little longer. And that's when people can start to resonate with that's why she's holding on to these baby blankets that obviously her children haven't used, right? She doesn't use them in, in six years, but it is also bringing her comfort at the same time. But also finding that holding on to 30 baby blankets <laughs> is really no different than holding to maybe your two favorite ones. Wow. And then taking the other 28 blankets and what I kind of said was transferring the joy, right? Mm -hmm. To give it to a mother in need, right? Give it to that mother who is, needs a baby blanket for her newborn. So now I'm going to take this sentimentally attached item that I associated with it, and I'm going to transfer my happiness and give it to her. That made it more of a positive experience of letting it go because we're replacing the anxiety and that low vibe, scarce, scarcity, fear. Oh, we're going to replace that with joy and happiness and these high thriving, you know, vibes to replace that because now we're attaching giving as positive. And that, those were huge instruments to help me. And not only that, every time I did a video and I decluttered something, guess what? I was getting tons of messages saying, way to go, you did it, you're strong. So now here's another avenue where decluttering is now a positive experience because I can feel their love. I can feel their support and their energy. They are here for me. And sometimes that's all you really need is a belief in yourself and to be believed in. 
And that can give you the energy to really change anything. And that's what you are doing for other people, right? On your channel. Yes. You are believing in them. You are the source of hundred percent for them. Yes, because everyone needs yes. a right. Everyone needs a cheerleader, right? I'm cheering they you. On. I they do. You. We can do this together. Let's lock arms, right? Yeah. I love what you're saying. It's not throwing away something. It's a transfer of joy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a release of something. It's, yeah. it's starting of a healing process like this Gain is so healing. beautiful this language that you are putting around this and so people can find you on your youtube channel yes talking about this bringing them through yep. the mindset around this is that right and you'll be cheering them on and believing in your audience and that's what they can expect absolutely because i always tell them i will cheer you on if you let go of one paper clip Absolutely. I will do cartwheels for you because I knew that one paperclip could have been 10 mental battles for you to get to that point. And because I know that and can feel it, I will be so proud of you. <laughs> so much value in what you are saying, because although it, it, the form that this takes uh, hold of, right, if you will, is recording. Yeah. What you're talking about is the same mental battle that anyone goes through, whether it's postpartum depression, whether it's just yep. depression, any type of mental illness, any type of uh, anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the fear being like completely paralyzed by fear. There are so many different um, ways that it translates, but the, what you're sharing, the tools to really dig yourself out of it are definitely relatable and the same, regardless of what mental hold it yes. has on you right now. Right. And what form it might be taking in your life, what you are sharing with us is so valuable, regardless of whether it's hoarding anxiety, fear, or depression, or whatever it is. Yes. And so Tell me, what do you believe is life's best kept secret? Oh, life's best kept secret. Hmm. This is, this is a good one. Life's best keep. Hmm. Just, just believe in yourself. Believe in love. Believe that the strength is within you to change. Mm. believe that you're not alone. You'll never be alone. You might feel like it, but you're not. Mm. And that there are like-minded people just like you who are ready to find you, who are ready to talk, who are ready to heal with you. No matter what that challenge looks like, someone else is going through it too. And they want to be with you <laughs> to heal from it, to achieve from it. Because everybody... Everyone wants to be heard and everyone wants to be accepted, right? And that's that, that bonding, that togetherness. That's where you really start to find that healing, right? But it starts in your soul. It starts in your heart. It starts by listening to the tugs that you get to change. So just in your meditation, in your quiet time, listen to the messages, listen to the tugs. They're leading you in the right direction. Change starts within you and the strength is there for you to accomplish what you want to do. Mm, I love it. Melanie Renee, we have here with us today, we are talking to her about humanizing hoarding disorder and you can find her on her wildly successful, no doubt, no doubt this is wildly successful. What you're doing for people is amazing. Her wildly successful YouTube channel called A Hoarder's Heart. The link will be in her episode. Um, so you can definitely click on and follow her there along with the millions of other followers she has right now, uh, regardless of how many millions of billions continue to follow Melanie Renee, she will be cheering you on and you will know that she is speaking directly to you, just like we're all feeling here in this episode with her today. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing a voice to this, for being the voice of humanizing hoarding disorder, um, and for being so brave, so brave to 
share your story really in an effort to help so many other people. Thank you for being our guest today. Thank you so much for listening today. I would love to connect with you on social and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Kate Butler Books. If you're interested in accessing some life-changing tools and techniques, you can grab those right off of the homepage of my website for free. And that is katebutlerbooks.com. And you can always check back here to download new episodes from our podcast right here where you listen today. Until next time, thank you for making this world a better place just by being you.